One of my dear Talmidim sent me a letter by the biggest rabbi today and one of the biggest in the world and certainly one of the biggest, if not the biggest, gadol in America, Rav Awen Feldman. And the Rosh Yeshiva, Shichye, which I spoke to once years ago in our fight against the heretics that invite uh, missionaries to synagogues, he speaks to the point. And despite his extensive experience in many years, he has not slowed down for even a moment. And he recently published a letter that he calls a message from the master designer in response to all of the people that, whether they're religious or non-religious Jews, are asking the question that is an old question. Where was God during the Holocaust? But now they've renewed it and saying, where was God during October 7th? Why did he allow it to happen? And he wrote this recently, and we'll see that from the letter itself. It's a little lengthy, but it's certainly worth reading it. There is only one way to describe the events which took place in Israel on Shmini Atzeret Simchat Torah on October 7th. And that is that on that day, God intervened in the workings of the world and sent a message to the Jews of Israel. If not for divine intervention, how else can one explain how on that day, Hamas forces were able to massacre over a thousand Jews and wound many times that number, pillage and destroy tens of settlements and take over 300 men and women and children and infants as hostages. A massive wall separated Gaza from Israel, equipped with sophisticated electronic devices able to detect any attempt at tampering. Surveillance towers supervised any activity within the wall. Israel controlled the airspace with fighter bombers and armed helicopters. It had a well-trained army with tanks and armored vehicles to respond to any attempt at invasion. The only equipment available to Arab forces was motorcycles and trucks. Yet, despite all this, Hamas forces were able to dismantle the electronic devices, amass tractors to breach the wall, and invade southern Israel with hundreds of heavily armed troops moving on motorcycles. The warnings of the surveillance post of military activity in Gaza were not taken seriously. The Air Force was not called into action, and it took four hours, and in some places eight hours, for Israeli forces to counterattack. By that time, Hamas forces had wrecked havoc and death on southern Israel. Israel was shaken to its core. The unimaginable had transpired. The army, which was the basis of their security, had failed them. It also became chillingly clear that if at the same time the Hezbollah had invaded the north and the Arabs in the occupied territories had decided on an uprising, this would have caused widespread devastation and loss of life of unspeakable dimensions. The nation suddenly felt vulnerable, weak, and without confidence in its survival. What transpired was unimaginable, and to this day, no one has explained how it happened. For in truth, there is no reasonable explanation. The only explanation is that the hand of God orchestrated the failings of the army and brought devastation to the Jews of Israel. It was God speaking to his people. We have no prophets to tell us the exact words of that message. But based on the words of the Torah and other prophecies, it's likely ran something like the following. For over 75 years, here the Rav Aaron Feldman is in essence telling us this is what, in essence, if a prophet was here telling us what's happening and why everything happened, this is what he would say. For over 75 years, you have created a state on my land with an educational system, institutes for scientific research, industry, commerce, agriculture, and general prosperity. But you omitted one element from your state. You deliberately left me out of the picture. I chose the Jews at Mount Sinai to be a nation of servants and a holy people. This meant that they were to be a nation devoted to me in every aspect of their lives. 
For this I gave them a Torah, where I commanded them to have tzitzit on their clothing, tefillin on their heads, mezuzot on their doorposts. I wanted them to testify to my existence on Shabbat and on the holidays, to refrain from eating food that dampened their yearning for sanctity, to refrain from slander and evil tongue, to support the poor and to devote themselves to the study of Torah. All of this to overcome their selfish drives for lust and power and to turn them into a holy people. To ensure that they remain a holy nation, I gave them a land where they would be able to flourish in their devotion to me without the influence of the nations of the world. The Jewish nation was my hope for mankind. I created the world so that mankind will overcome evil and accept me as their sovereign. The instrument for reaching this goal would be my nation. When the proper time arrives, I will appear to them in all my glory and all of mankind will then recognize that man was created to devote himself to my service. Because the Jewish nation is crucial to carrying out my plans for the world, I watched over them and protected them throughout the ages from the nations of the world who sought to devour them. But you decided to thwart my plans. You decided to use my land to remake Jews into a nation like the nations of the world. You wanted Jews to be like them and live for the fulfillment of their appetites and to make wealth and military conquest the apex of their glory. You wanted Jews to forget that they were meant to be a holy nation. I have tried repeatedly to warn you of the evil of your ways. I sent you the Yom Kippur War, the missiles of Saddam Hussein, the Intifada, the Gaza missile attacks, and sundry other messages to show you cannot build a Jewish nation and leave me out. But none of these warnings were to any avail. I became mostly concerned lately when you demonstrated for three months against me, when generals announced their resignation, when professors signed petitions, when your wealthy donated millions for advertisements and demonstra demonstrators to block the streets. I know the demonstrations were ostensibly against judicial reform to retain the right of the Supreme Court to override the Knesset, but I also know that for most of you, the demonstrations were aimed at my Torah to ensure that the Supreme Court would block any intrusion of religion into your society. I was more concerned on this last Yom Kippur, when many shuls in Tel Aviv emptied out into Dizengov Square for the Neila services, a time when the heart of whoever identifies as a Jew turns to me in devotion. Tens of your citizens broke up the services with punching, shoving, and slogan shouting. What was most disturbing is that afterwards, there was insufficient protest against this massive desecration of worship. Again, as a side note, we see the repeated offense, not just by those that declare war against the Torah, but also by those that claim to be religious, claim to be loyal, but don't defend the Torah. Anytime we fight for the sake of God's glory in His name, and protest against wicked people, there are always so-called religious people that tell us, God doesn't need you to fight for Him. Well, apparently, He destroyed the entire Beit HaMikdash twice because we're not fighting for Him. As the prophet uh, Jeremiah was told by Hashem Himself, if you find one synagogue, one rabbi that's actually fighting for my name, that's spreading the truth, I'll absolve the entire nation of this offense. I won't destroy the Beit HaMikdash. And the Gemara in Masechet Chaygaz says that Jeremiah went from place to place, from shul to shul, from Bet Midrash to Bet Midrash, and couldn't find one, one rabbi that was protesting for the honor of Hashem. Everybody was concentrated on their own thing. The tuition, the, uh, the regiment, the family, the uh, feeding the poor, feeding the rich, whatever it was, nobody was defending God's honor. Jeremiah started crying, saying, avadu. There are no more people of truth. And that's where the Gemara Masech HaIgaz says, Hashem decided at that moment to destroy the Bet HaMikdash. In essence, the same is repeated in Gemara Masech Shabbat. But the Rav over here, Rav Owen Feldman, is saying that the same thing is happening right now, meaning it's not just the reformers and the haters of the Torah 
that are guilty here, but it's also the religious people that are guilty for not protesting against this wicked behavior. And he continues. And he says, there was insufficient protest against this massive desecration of worship. I began to fear that you might be lost to me forever as my nation. I therefore decided to wake you up with a powerful shock. I wanted you to realize that hitherto you were successful in your wars and in building up my land, not because of your cleverness or your army, but because I watched over you and granted you success. I wanted you to see that when I removed my support for you for a moment, your cleverness disappeared and your army fell to pieces. It was a blow from a, of love made on the day Shmini Atzeret, which I set apart for celebrating with you as my nation. You are my children whom I love unlimitedly, but I had to unleash this disaster upon you to make you recognize that you have gone astray. Because I love you, I will not permit you to become a nation like all others. Without the Jews as a nation that lives to serve God, mankind will never reach its goal, and my plan at creation will never be realized. To make sure you got the message, I spare those Jews who have remained faithful to me. I am well aware that they have many shortcomings, but they alone remain faithful to the de definition of a Jew as my people, the people who receive the Torah, the village of Tifrach, in whose yeshiva 1,000 people had gathered to celebrate Simchat Torah, danced with their Sifret Torah throughout the day, October 7th he's referring to, without even being aware of the advance of the slaughtering enemy who despite their original plans, decided to turn away from the settlement. The Shabbat observing kibbutzim, directly in the path of the invaders, were bypassed. The shul section of Ofakim was left untouched, while much of the rest of that town was ravaged. I could easily have brought you to your knees by having Hamas coordinate their attack with an invasion by the Hezbollah in the north and with an uprising in the territories. Your army would not have been able to handle that, even four hours later. But I did not wish to destroy you, only to awaken you. Similarly, six months hence, when Iran will send hundreds of missiles and drones to wipe you out. I will not permit a hair of your head to be harmed and all the missiles will be destroyed. You are my beloved nation. I love and care for you as a father cares for his son, but a father cannot permit his son to sink into debauchery and corruption. He is obligated to help him extricate himself from his self-destructive ways. You are my children. And, a, and the time has come to remind you that you cannot remake my nation into another nation of the world. Until you change your ways and begin to define yourselves as Jews in, the true de, in their true definition, you will have to fight for your survival. The war with Hamas will never end. You cannot defeat those who do not care about life, who do not wish to live in peace, and whose only desire is to wipe you off the face of the earth. Even if you drive them out of Gaza, they will attack from some other quarter. The nations of the world will not come to your assistance. They want a world free of Jews. Jews make them feel guilty for living their lives devoted to lust and power. They are ashamed to say this openly, but to the extent that they are able to cloak their hatred in noble declarations of humanitarianism, they will encourage Hamas to defeat you. You must realize that they are not the enemy. The enemy is you yourselves and your attempt to obliterate the Jewish people by abandoning the Torah and assimilating into the culture of the nations of the world. Once you realize this and return to my Torah, your enemies will return to their holes and peace will reign in my land. I have confidence in you that you will come to your senses. You are, after all, the children of my beloved Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Your ancestors stood before me at Mount Sinai and declared, Naseh v'nishma. False prophets led you astray with their fraudulent promises of security and an end to anti-Semitism if only you cease observing my Torah and become like all other nations. The time has come to reject their false prophecies and return to me. It cannot be otherwise for you are my nation. Up to here is the extraordinary letter 
by Rav Aaron Feldman, in essence, telling us what a prophet would be telling us if we were here at the time of the Bet HaMikdash, or if simply HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided to bring prophecy back even for a moment. This is the same thing that the sages and the prophets have told us throughout all of the generations. There is no such thing as a punishment without sin. There is no such thing as where was God during the Holocaust? He was the one that did it. Where was God during the October 7th? He is the one that did it. The question should not be where was he? The question should be where were we before it happened? And this is in essence the same question that we are seeing was asked repeatedly throughout all of the generations. I am sure that if there were any other survivors from the generation of Noah, aside from Noah and his three sons, they would also ask, where was God during the flood? Where was God during the Tower of Babel? Where was God during uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? There was always going to be people that want to deny the truth and live in a delusional mindset. Why? Because if God is the one that punished, then that means that God is the one that could heal. And if he's the one that could heal, he must have given us an instructions of how to fix it. And if he gave us instructions of how to fix it, we would have to be clearly stupid not to follow those instructions. מרבה תורה, מרבה חיים. ומי שפורש מתורה, חס ושלום נדבק במוות. זה פשוט. So anyone that is uh, looking for ways to uh, better his situation, protect himself, protect his family from the horrific situation that's around us, the terrorism and everything else, they must understand that the only way is to increase Torah. More Torah, more life.